Hi there, I'm Kelly from She Sails Away. Welcome to my channel. I just got back from a seven night cruise to Alaska aboard the Royal Princess. This was a family cruise and it was our first time trying out Princess Cruise Lines. Today I'm going to give you an honest review of the Royal Princess. We're going to take a look at the food, activities offered, the shows, the ship itself, and the whole cruising experience aboard the Royal Princess. So let's get started. I'm going to divide my review into these categories. We're going to look at food, activities, entertainment, the overall cruising experience, and the ship itself. Let's start with the ship itself. The Royal Princess first sailed in 2013. It was refurbished in 2018. It is over 142,000 tons. It is 217 feet high and over a thousand feet long. It can hold 3,560 guests, 1,346 crew. There are 1,780 cabins and 19 decks. As I mentioned, this was my first time on any princess ship. When I boarded the Royal Princess, the words that kept coming to mind were beautiful, elegant, classic, gorgeous. This is a gorgeous ship. Nothing to complain about here. Beautifully designed, there is gold and glass and glittering things everywhere you look. Dark wood, marble, tile, very, very beautiful. Now the heart of the ship is the atrium. This is three stories high and it is surrounded by things you will use throughout the cruise, such as cafes and lounges, guest services, the spa, shops, things like that. We'll get into more detail on this soon. The atrium is just beautiful, as you can see. Lots of activities here throughout the week, all day long into the night. There were guest speakers, there were fitness classes, lots of live music. We went straight up to the pool deck to look around, and I will say that I tend to judge a cruise ship quite a bit based on its pool deck, because this is such a large part of the ship, and it's where I tend to spend a great deal of my time right here on the pool deck so it's important to me that it be beautiful well designed plenty of space for everybody the royal princess did not disappoint this is a beautiful pool deck and the pools are beautiful they are extra beautiful at night when they are lit up in different colors there were plenty of lounge chairs here you had seating on the main pool deck and up above Plenty of spaces to walk, too, without feeling crowded or having to squeeze past people in their chairs. They had outdoor movies here. Now, the movie screen was not the best, most updated quality ever, but they did have plenty of outdoor movies and concert videos playing. There was a sports court on the top deck. They had basketball available here, pickleball and volleyball. There was also a golf swing practice area and a really great walking trail. There is also plenty of eating available around the pool deck. They had pizza, they had a hamburger bar, they had complimentary ice cream. You're not very far from the buffet here. And as I mentioned, beautiful, beautiful areas to gather. As far as our accommodations, I was traveling with family, so we had two cabins, an interior cabin. And an obstructed view balcony cabin. Now this obstructed view balcony cabin is one that I made a bid on. I originally booked my husband and I in an interior room and then I was given the opportunity to bid on an obstructed view balcony. I bid the minimum bid, which was $300, and I won. 
and we were very lucky in that we liked this room and we liked the location. My one complaint about the cabin is the lack of plugs. There were two plugs for the whole cabin. You're going to want to bring some sort of multi-plug adapter. Now it's very important that you check the Princess website for which kind of these things are allowed because there are quite a few restrictions. You can't bring a power strip, you can't bring just any old adapter. So my recommendation to you, if you're sailing Royal Princess, look online, see what you can bring, bring some sort of multi-plug adapter. Now, as far as the bars and lounges go, these were all beautiful. They were all well laid out. Some were more crowded than others. Some were smaller than others. There were some more popular than others, so it was difficult to find a seat. But I felt everything had its own particular space and had a lot of thought and care put into the design and furnishings of each space. Each space felt intentional, welcoming, elegant but cozy, very inviting. The Royal Princess has a handful of shops aboard. The shops are, in my opinion, pretty small. Not a lot to see here, but for basic shopping needs, it's fine. They had a high-end jewelry shop, of course. They, of course, had the art gallery with the art auction and all of that. And they had a basic gift shop here with some basic t-shirts and random items, as well as a small selection of toiletries if you had forgotten to pack something. They had a few other shops, you know, selling purses and watches and different things like that. I spent some time in the casino while aboard the Royal Princess. This is a very nice casino, a little bit crowded, a little bit difficult to navigate the slot machines when it's at full capacity and everybody's there. But overall, nice casino. Everywhere I went on the Royal Princess, I felt that the ship was beautiful. I mean, I keep using the word beautiful, but those are the words that keep coming to mind. Beautiful, gorgeous, classy, elegant. I felt the ship was well designed, well cared for, well maintained. It feels modern, updated, classy, luxurious. Now having said that, I did have an issue with navigating the ship and so did a couple of people within my family group. Overall, I felt that the ship was just a little confusing to get around. They had maps, huge interactive maps at every elevator bank. And I would look at these maps quite a bit. I would study the deck plans. Just the same, I constantly found myself trying to remember where things were, which way I was pointed. And one thing we found is that we kept running into dead ends. We would just walk somewhere we thought we were going somewhere specific, and we would come to a dead end. Or we would come to an elevator that was only for staff. It was just a little confusing to find your way around the ship and that was a noticeable issue for some of us in my family party. Other minor issues with the Royal Princess were the distinct lack of plugs in the cabin. As I mentioned, two plugs for the whole cabin. So that's an odd thing, but it goes into my overall rating of the ship. And what I'm giving the Royal Princess for the ship overall is 7 out of 10. It's time to move into entertainment. We're going to talk about the shows offered on the Royal Princess, and I have to say, I was blown away. I had low expectations for some reason coming into this cruise, I guess because I've never cruised Princess before. The singing, the acting, the quality of the entertainment here was phenomenal. This rivals the very best shows I've seen anywhere on any cruise ship anytime. Of 
There was something every night to choose from, and there was so much live music to choose from all day and into the night. Some of the music options were the Serendipity Duo, the House Band, the Souvenir Duo, the Sandoval Duo, James Band. We had a singer, Derek Dishington, an amazing pianist, Ignacio Avino. We had DJ Anthony. Some of the production shows were called Sweet Soul Music. We had Colors of the World, and we had a magician, Reggie Rice. He was phenomenal. He went on for his very first performance on that ship, even though there was a curtain malfunction and he had to stand in front of the stage instead of on the stage. He still performed. He was hilarious and an excellent magician. Overall, no complaints about the entertainment. It was outstanding. Super quality, lots of availability, something for everyone. For that reason, I'm giving the entertainment aboard the Royal Princess a 10 out of 10. Now it's time to move on to the food category. I'm going to walk you through some of the things we ate and all of the different options aboard the Royal Princess. Let's begin with the three main dining rooms. There is the Symphony, the Allegro, and the Concerto. We ate in Symphony, and it was a beautiful dining room. As you can see, classic and elegant. The food here was very good. The service was outstanding. We had the most phenomenal wait staff I think I've ever had. They were so attentive, so positive, so professional. They made everything wonderful. There was a great variety of drinks and menu items, but I will say there was very, very little choices here for vegans and very little for vegetarians. Now there was one or two choices for vegetarians per meal, but that was it. And if you are a vegan, very, very limited choices here. Putting aside the vegetarian and vegan issues, I felt the food here was fresh. I felt that it had a nice variety of choices. It came promptly, it was hot, and it was very tasty. So let's move on to all of the complimentary dining included with your cruise fare. Let's begin on deck five. Right next to the atrium, you're going to find the International Cafe. This is available 24-7. You can get coffee and tea here. For a fee, you can get specialty coffees and teas, and they were delicious. They also have a good selection of sandwiches, pastries, fruit, breakfast items, little snacky type things available 24 seven. Also on deck five near the atrium is a place to get gelato. We had the Princess Plus Fair, which meant we could have two premium desserts a day. So we would go to the gelato place every day, get one of these ridiculous, huge, overblown sundaes and share it. If you didn't have this included in your fare, these sundaes ran 12 to $13 a piece and the gelato, even a scoop of gelato was an upcharge. Now up by the pool, they had a grill, Trident grill, where you could get burgers and dogs and things like that. And right next to that was a place to get casual pizza. If you wanted to just grab a slice while you were hanging out by the pool or walking by, very tasty pizza. Now the biggest food option other than main dining was the buffet. This was open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was huge. It's called Horizon Court and it has a bistro food court kind of atmosphere in here. The buffet is divided into sections and you're going to have to do some wandering to see all of the choices. They have a ramen section, a salad section, a pasta section, all those kinds of things. I will say they had a really nice variety of food here, more so than I've seen on other cruise ships so far. They had some unusual items as well as kind of standard things. The food was fresh, it was hot. It was not the greatest food I ever had in my life, but it was one of the better cruise ship buffets I've had in the last few years.
Of course, there are plenty of specialty dining options aboard. There's Sabatini's with Italian food, pasta, and wine. There's a Crown Grill, which is a steakhouse. They have a crab shack with clam chowder, shrimp, crab pot, those kinds of things. There is an ocean terrace with different kinds of sushi. There's a Vines, which sells wine and champagne and tapas. There's always room service. And there's a specialty thing you can do called Chef's Table Lumiere. It's behind the scenes tour of a galley. And then you get a multi-course dinner with that. Given all the information I have just shared, I'm going to give the food on the Royal Princess an 8 out of 10. As I said, the buffet was one of the best ones I've had in the last few years. The dining room was exceptional. I'm giving it knocks for the lack of vegan and vegetarian choices. My husband has a meat allergy, so I'm always on the lookout for this kind of thing. And it's not unique to Princess, but it is a knock against a 10 star rating. So for the food on Royal Princess, 8 out of 10. And this brings us to activities. Now there were a lot of activities to choose from throughout the day. A lot of standard activities, but some special ones as well. Now as far as standard activities, they had the spa available and they had spa sales and presentations throughout the week. They had scavenger hunt quizzes and trivia on different topics. They had some game shows that were a lot of fun. The shops had some different sales day to day. And there were quite a few fitness classes offered. Some in the gym, but quite a few in the middle of the atrium. Stretch class, yoga, Zumba. There were dance classes, all kinds of things like that. The sports court had some activities day to day, like a basketball shootout, or a hole-in-one golf challenge. There was a solo and singles gathering suggested. It was not hosted, but it was suggested. The photographers were doing formal portraits and casual portraits throughout the week. Princess always has movies under the stars. And a couple of special activities they had for us was they had two Iditarod mushers come two separate times and give presentations on what it's like to be a musher and what's involved in the Iditarod. And on one of those occasions, the musher brought puppies and we had puppies in the piazza. And that was very popular and super cute. All in all, with the choices offered, the variety for all ages and all abilities, there were active things, there were non-active things, there were quizzes and sports. I feel like they did a good job offering different things. Now, I will say I used the spa while I was here. I consider the spa an activity. And I used the spa twice on the ship. I had my hair done and I had a massage. And in both cases, I was very disappointed. I have never really had a bad spa experience on a cruise ship before other than maybe some high pressure sales. But I was disappointed with both of my experiences here so that's going to factor into my marks for the activities for the Royal Princess. So for activities I'm giving the Royal Princess an 8 out of 10. And that brings us to the overall cruising experience aboard the Royal Princess. I had a good experience and the rest of my family enjoyed their cruise as well. Everything went fairly smoothly. Boarding was easy. There were no problems with the app. There were no problems at port. We were on the ship fairly quickly. We left port late. There was a problem with some luggage being delivered. I'm sure that's not their fault. So we left port late, that wasn't a problem. And we had a beautiful sail away with lots of dancing and celebration. Now I have to stop and talk about the way Princess handled Glacier Bay. This was an Alaskan cruise, so of course 
part of my overall cruising experience ties into how well I was shown Alaska, how easily Alaska was made available to me. Princess is one of the few cruise lines that has access to Glacier Bay. This was an all-day event for us, and Princess handled it spectacularly. It was treated as a very special day. They canceled all activities for the day, so there would be no noise, no distractions. They understood we would spend our day on deck looking at all of the scenery. They brought a park ranger aboard, and he did commentary the entire time we were in Glacier Bay, sharing with us what we were looking at. All of the geology facts, all of the scientific facts, everything you could think of. His commentary was presented loud and clear. No matter where you were on deck, you could hear him. And his commentary made all the difference. We got fairly close to the glaciers, as, as close as we could, I'm sure. And we stayed there quite a while, and then the captain rotated the boat slowly so we could all have a look at the glacier, no matter which side of the ship we were on. They offered hot drinks throughout the day, in the afternoon, they did have a sale on jackets, which was appropriate. A lot of people did buy some jackets. But overall, they just made Glacier Bay wonderful. Now, as far as the rest of the cruise, they did a great job. We were in port when we were supposed to be. We left on time. We did not have any weird, unexpected problems pop up. There was a couple of minor issues with some of the entertainment where shows were canceled, but they were rescheduled as soon as possible. The crews felt professional, well handled, communication was well handled, the app worked well. There was an overall welcoming vibe on the whole ship. I found the staff on the whole to be very professional, very on top of their game, very welcoming. I felt there was a great variety of port stops, entertainment, and activities. Disembarkation, there was a snag there. There were too many people leaving in the morning, so there was a hang up with disembarkation, but it wasn't anything serious. And we were off the ship fairly quick. Princess still offers room service twice a day as far as room cleaning. It is not critical to me to have my room cleaned twice a day, but they do offer it twice a day and a lot of cruise lines have taken that away. I thought that they tied into the Alaska theme well. They had Alaska themed merchandise in the shops. They brought the two mushers on board two separate times for presentations. They had a special entertainer give a musical version of the history of Alaska. The day we did Glacier Bay, all of us got a special map in our stateroom and it is a huge detailed map not just illustrated, but with lots of information inside as well. So all in all, I have to give the cruising experience on the Royal Princess a nine out of 10. I thought they did a great job. I don't have any major complaints and I would not hesitate to sail with Princess or the Royal Princess again. And let me add that I felt that Princess was an especially good choice for Alaska. Now, I really, really like the Royal Princess. However, I don't necessarily want to spend two weeks on the Royal Princess for, say, a transatlantic. That's just my personal preference. I prefer a much larger ship for longer cruises, but for Alaska particularly, this was an excellent choice. Princess knows how to do Alaska, and they did it beautifully. That wraps up everything I have to say about the Royal Princess. I will have several videos coming out soon about our Alaska trip and all of our excursions. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please consider subscribing. It would really help out my channel. And please hit the like button. Are you planning a cruise to Alaska? Have you already been? If you have any thoughts or comments to share with your fellow traveler, please leave a comment. Thank you for stopping by and enjoy your next cruise.